Okay, so here you can see that we're done installing. Uh, my mouse is still kind of stuck in the VM, as you can see. It's acting kind of weird. So if I hit Control alt that'll free it from the VM and bring it back over to the host. If I close that sidebar down, uh, I can see that my screen is a little bit too big to fit within here. So <clears throat> uh, that, that, that's something we'll have to survive with for a few minutes. Okay. So the next thing we want to do, now that we've finished installing, is uh, you should probably click this I finished installing thing. Okay. That goes away, basically marks the VMX to say, we're done installing. This is now a live guest, so to speak. And then we go to the VM pull down and say install VMware tools. And what that does it is, is it inserts a, an ISO image uh, with a whole bunch of autoplay tools. And you basically install these um, drivers and tools into the guest operating system. Now each guest operating system, of course, will have its own set of drivers, its own set of tools, depending on what the operating system is. In this case, Windows XP, pretty pretty tried and true, simple operating system. Um, and it's taking its time. There we go. Next, typical is fine. Next, install. So we are installing this inside the guest. Okay, so that's that's the key. Also, you can see here that my uh, my C drive has grown in size. It is now, and it still continues to grow in size. Okay. This is the virtual file, the file that simulates the virtual disk. All right, and finish. We will now restart the guest, and the guest restarts with uh, the new set of drivers, as well as uh, probably the most important part, the most important drivers are the display drivers. Okay, so the display drivers are kind of unique. Um, <clears throat> they don't really simulate a uh, regular video card with like a regular monitor connected to it, but rather it's kind of like a dynamically resizing monitor. So as I resize the window in which the guest is running, we transmit that information back into the guest, the driver interprets it, and can resize the guest display to match. So I'll demonstrate that in a second. So we're just almost done booting up. Okay. And then within the guest, you can see right now we're, we're in 640 by 480 resolution. It's pretty low res. If I right click on the desktop, go to properties, I can see here the settings. It's at 640 by 480. If I set it to 800 by 600 and apply it, and apply it, you can see that my guest resizes. Okay. So, and not only that, my window outside resizes to fit the guest. But notice that if I shrink the external window, my guest still stays configured to 800 by 600. What I could do though is I go to view and then I say fit, uh, fit window and what that'll do is it'll size the window to fit uh, what the guest believes the resolution should be. And if I shrink this window, let's say I shrink it just a little bit to some weird size like that, and I go to view and I say auto fit guest let's resize it again uh, there we go so you can see that it is it is actually uh, trying to tie the guests resolution to the size of my window so if I if I size it to be some kind of odd shape like this see I mean th this is something you would not normally get in a display right but let's take a look at the properties now. Oh, can't even see it. Let's just resize this. You can see, okay, it's not even showing what it is. That's awesome. Let's just do that. Cancel out of there. Go properties again. Take a look. Hmm, doesn't seem to be showing it. It's interesting. Anyhow, you get the idea. So we we are able to pass that information into the guest, and same with the guest out to the outside. Okay, So you can see here I've got graphical representations of my two network cards, graphical representations of my two hard disks. If I go into uh, format my second disk here, let's give this a shot, you can see activity as well, you see the lights are blinking away. This is my second disk right here. Let me convert that to dynamic just to show that it really behaves just like another disk. Create a volume, create a simple volume, let's make it the full 5 gigs. Sure, We'll format it with NTFS and we will deliberately not quick format. Now watch. 
I want you to pay attention to this right down here, hard disk 2, which is 5 gigs. When I click finish, it's going to light up. Okay. Um, it will light up. <laughs> once, once the actual guest starts formatting. And here you, get, here you go. You see? Look at that. Okay. So the 5 gigs are being formatted out right now. And this device here is simulating uh, that drive. Okay. So, so and it's physically in this file right here. Okay, so here it is, 30 megs represents that 5 gigs presently. As I start to copy data into here, so let's, uh, let's go to my uh, second disk here. And let's go and copy some data. Oh, sure, let's just copy, uh, let's just copy whatever, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so as I start writing to this disk, you can see that this VMDK, which is representing my second hard drive, is growing in size. Okay, so it's up to 41 megs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and oh no, no, it died up because I can't copy open files. But anyhow, that that's Windows for you. Um, what else do I want to show you? We'll finish off with this. Um, we're going to Control Panel. Take a look at the interfaces that are available to us. Let's get out of this. Network connections. All right, you can see that we've got two interfaces. This one is showing a little yellow thing here because it's probably set to DHCP and it's failing to get an IP. Okay, so it's set to DHCP as you can see here. And if we take a look at the second interface, so this is the, uh, the second interface here, it is not getting a legitimate IP. Okay, it's getting 169.254.13.215. And the reason this is happening is remember, I plugged this into virtual network 3. Basically, I plugged it into a switch where there's nothing else resident. Specifically, there's no DHCP server. Okay, so uh, let's unplug the cable. If I right-click on any interface and I say disconnect, that's similar to hitting the eject on the DVD. So let's try that too. Here you can see uh, I have uh, the Windows installation DVD in, uh, physically inserted or uh, virtually inserted into the DVD. If I right-click on the DVD device and disconnect, it's the same as ejecting that, and you can see it disappears. Also, I just ejected or physically disconnected the virtual cable that went to the virtual interface number two here. Okay, so if I do an IP config slash all now within the guest, you can see that it is showing media disconnected. And let me just disconnect this one as well, just to prove a point. And you can see that now both interfaces are disconnected as far as the uh, guest is concerned. Now, what you, you cannot disconnect a hard disk while it's live. Okay, so that, that, that's something we cannot simulate here, unfortunately. You can also disconnect the sound card. What that does is it just disassociates the virtual sound card with the real sound card, so any sounds that are generated inside the VM guest will not be transmitted out to the host. Okay, so that could be also very handy if you don't want all this noise coming out of your VMs. All right, so... There's a quick whirlwind tour of installing a virtual machine, um, understanding the basics of a VM, and uh, um, yeah, and using a very basic operating system. Don't forget the VMware tools. It's a good idea to have these things installed because it gives us utilities within the guest that allow us to do certain things, like synchronize the time of the guest to the host, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so um, and also the device drivers, which are also very important for performance and whatnot. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Um, this is another one of my introductory videos, and uh, hopefully uh, this helps you get somewhere. Cheers.